Hey all, welcome to part two of my Warren Spector special feature. Didn't watch part one? Go do it now! Otherwise, sit back, relax and watch me play 2010's Disney Epic Mickey on the Wii while Warren bestows upon you his unique brand of gaming related wisdom. So Warren, did Disney create a lot of boundaries for you while you were working on Epic Mickey 2? Disney was, was so much more open than I expected them to be. I was really worried, you know. But, but here's the thing you have to remember. Um, Disney came to me and asked if I would do a Mickey Mouse game. I didn't go to them. I wasn't at that time an employee. They, they came to me because, yeah, I mean, clearly they saw something in the work that I'd done and in my enthusiasm for Disney that, that told them I was the right guy. Okay. Um, so that was a good starting point. The second thing is, I'm a huge Disney geek. <laughs> you know, it happened since I was a kid. I used to teach animation history and animation production at the University of Texas. I mean, I, I, I know the history of Disney as well as anybody, yeah, as well as most people at Disney, let's just put it that way, okay? And I, I really just, I respect what, what Walt Disney, the man, and, and the company have done uh, at a pretty deep level. So it's not like I was gonna come in there and screw around. You know, so there was that. The other thing that, that uh, I've talked about enough that it, you know maybe you've heard this, maybe you haven't, but the fact is, Disney, when they asked if I was interested in doing a Mickey Mouse game, said you know, I said no originally because I don't do games for kids, and they said no, 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 we want you to do your Mickey game, and then they said, would you mind? We have an idea. Do you mind if we pitch you our idea? And I said sure. You know, I mean, Disney has a lot of creative people. Well, I mean, go ahead. And so they pitched me this idea that, that incorporated uh, three elements that I fell in love with. I mean, I genuinely fell in love with. Uh, the idea of Mickey Mouse, the world's most popular and, and recognizable icon, trapped in a world of forgotten and rejected Disney history. That came from Disney. Bringing back Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. I, I mean, a, an animation fan and historian getting the chance to to put Oswald on the screen in a Disney story for the first time in 80 years? Who says no to that? And then the Phantom Blot as as a villain. And I, I, I the Phantom Blot is just a real a character that I love. Uh, and I have big plans for that we're not going to talk about. But uh, I, they said, you know, you don't have to do any of this. Do the game you want to make. And I said, why would I not do that? Those are three ideas that are absolutely genius, and no one's going to make a game about that except me. You know? So we started from a point where I wanted to make that game. You know? uh, so I had that going for me. And over the course of the years, I mean, look, it, it, it's been contentious at times because I'm a real obnoxious, stubborn jerk. You know? And I don't give in easily, and I'm happy to yell at people to get what I want. But they. They love these characters at Disney, you know? So the negotiation, it wasn't like uh, I wanted to, you know, give Mickey a gun and they wouldn't let me. I mean, it wasn't that. It was the kind of thing like um, I wanted to do an Alice in Wonderland world, you know? Uh, and had some fun ideas and some cool ideas about how to do that. And they said, you know, Tim Burton is doing an Alice movie. And I said, ooh, you're right, I didn't think about that. Maybe I don't want to compete with Tim Burton and a movie that's going to open on 4,000 screens, you know, to be the representation of Alice in Wonderland for a modern audience. Maybe I shouldn't do that. And I wanted to do a bunch of stuff with rejected Tinkerbells, and they said, um, well, you know, we've got this fairy stuff going on. I mean, maybe, maybe it's not a great idea to do fairy stuff that's different from the stuff that we were, we're already doing. And I, I thought, you know, that kind of makes sense. Okay, let's not do that. Um, but there were there there was very few moments. I mean, like there was one moment where Disney said, "No, you can't do that," and that was I can't show. I'm not allowed to show Mickey's teeth. Oh. Wow, <laughs> I quit. You know, I mean, I, it doesn't even make sense to me. But whatever, you know. So uh, it, it, it's been that sort of that sort of thing. I mean, I I, I think. You know, I, I talk to the folks, it, I mean, there, there are people whose job it is to like sort of evaluate and approve stuff, you know, at the Disney franchises, you know, I'm, I think they like me, and I think they like what we did, and they're great to work with, and, you know, um, so you're seeing the game I want to make. I mean, I told Disney the day I met them, as I told Electronic Arts, as I told IDOS, I mean, I make the games I want to make, and I make them the way I want to make them, and if you don't like that, let's just not work together, that's fine with me, you know, and they said, no, we, we're, we're in, so uh, you're not, you're not seeing a, 
bastardized, half-assed, you know, this is not the game Warren wanted to make. That. No, this is exactly the game I wanted to make. Uh, I, I found I found a, a place where I get to make the games I want to make. I mean, like, I, I mean, most places would have forced me to put a gun in the character's hands because that's what sells, you know, and Disney, I'm not, I'm not even, like, going to consider doing it. It's perfect. What's your opinion on the growth of mobile and tablet gaming? Are you a fan? You know, true confessions time, uh, like most people in the world now, I do most of my gaming on the little computer that's super powerful in my pocket and on tablets uh, and on handhelds occasionally, you know? Uh, there, there's so much creative energy and creative freedom and, and opportunity in the game business right now. Uh, it's amazing, but for me personally, this is, uh, don't assume you know anything about what I'm going to be doing next or what I think people should be doing, but just personally, I am more intrigued by the idea of tablet games. I mean, a billion people all have a little game machine that they, they have with them at all times. That's amazing. And how, how do I translate player-driven, player-expression, character-driven, story-based stuff, you know, deep original stories. How do I translate that to a, a device that has no conventional control scheme? I mean, virtual joysticks suck, you know? And touch and swipe is good for some things, but not so good for other things. How do I take what I do and translate it to a tablet? Uh, how, do I, how do I take you know, even I, I want to be making shorter games now. I mean, I actively want to be making shorter games. Like, you know, six hours is like the sweet spot for me. A six hour completable experience that you can play over and over and over again and have a different experience every time. That's like the that's the the goal for me. You know, how do I how do I translate that to a, a platform where people are usually standing in line at Starbucks? They have five minutes to play. How do I do that? I have no idea. So that's, I mean, I've, uh, honestly, I've, I'm, I'm trying to convince Disney to let me do that, you know? I, I, and and I, the, the problem is I have to tell them, honestly, no idea what I'm going to do. I have no idea how to solve the problems. I might fail gloriously. Let me do it. That's not a pitch that they really like very much, you know? They want to know, how am I creating the next, you know, billion dollar franchise? And, you know, and I, I don't know, what game are you going to make? Tell us the entire story right now. I have no idea. I want to, like, I want to play for six months because I have no clue. I've never made a game for an iPhone. I've never made a game for an iPhone. I, you know, I, I, I just want to do it, you know? So, uh, I mean, yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, make no assumptions here. But don't be surprised if you hear in six months, Warren Spector making a, a tablet exclusive game. I mean, it could happen. I don't know. I have no idea. But I, I just... Yeah, I'm really intrigued by that thing you've got in your lap. Uh, that came out wrong. I'm really intrigued by the iPad. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and I, I really want to play on that. I really want to play um, in, the, in the mobile space. It's pretty cool. What do you think is the future of gaming? The coolest thing about video games right now is that it is total chaos. I mean, nobody has a clue. There are people who think, Social media games are the future of gaming. Free to play is the only answer. Mobile is the future. We all have to be on tablets, you know. There are people who think the next gen, you know, we just need to wait for the next generation of consoles and all of a sudden we'll be able to do hyper-realistic Pixar quality in real time with interactivity. That's the future. You know, hundred million dollar games, Kickstarter projects that generate ten thousand dollars is the future. Indie is the future. Nobody knows. You know, interactive movies of the future, episodic stuff from Telltale is the future. You, you, who knows, right? So, but here's, here's the thing. Uh, I know what I want to do. I'm going to try to find a place to do it. If you have an idea, you could be one person in a garage, you could be living with your parents, you know, and create a game that can reach an audience and change the world. One person can change the world, you know? You can go and, and get $100 million and create a game for whatever the next Sony or, or Microsoft platform is and have a team of a thousand people and change the world. You can make a free-to-play thing uh, that you distribute over Facebook. You can make a game that, 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 that ships, that you, you get, you download on Congregate uh, or off of Origin or off of Steam. Uh, anything is possible. I mean, 10 years ago, that was not possible. No one saw that coming. Anybody who says they saw it coming is, is also, you know, a fool or a liar. Okay, uh, 
And, and I, I, I've, I've said this before, I will say it again. We are at a time now where creativity trumps cash. If you have the right idea, that's more important than all the money in the world, and you are as powerful as the people who run the biggest media companies and the biggest game companies in the world. And that is an amazing time to live in. It's scary. It's especially scary for the people who are, you know, committed to a particular kind of game and a particular business model. Because who knows? Free to play might be the future, or it might be gone tomorrow. Mobile might be the future, or it might be gone tomorrow. Consoles might be the future, or they might be gone. My my guess is that, you know, the people who survive and thrive are the ones who who, who have a, a you know a balanced portfolio. I guess the people who are doing a little bit of everything. Uh, and doing it exceptionally well because creativity and quality are what matter now. I, I, I am, I, I'm just so excited about where games are right now because nobody has a clue. I, it's boring when everybody knows you must do this. You've got to go find a publisher. You've got to have a team of 200 people. You've got to spend you know X million dollars. You have to put it on a disc and you know get Nintendo and Microsoft and Sony to approve it. And then you've got to put it on a store shelf. And then you've got to sell it for $60. I mean that's boring. I mean, it's not that those games are boring. It's that that being the only way to do something, everything's possible. Go have fun. Change the world. You know. Show me how. What a fool I am. Go go go. It's cool. Haha! <laughs> I totally just catapulted that gremlin for cash. That'll learn him for getting caught in the first place. I hope you enjoyed listening to Warren talk games as much as I did. It's the people like him in the industry that stop every game in the world being a soulless cod clone with a copy and paste storyline. And I hope this video has helped inspire any of you budding games designers who may be watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for many more exclusive Gamescom features and tons of other cool stuff coming soon. Bye for now. <laughs>